Oh man, I got a lot of different, um, oh, over here, all these cables here behind the computer. Ugh, just looks so messy. I gotta clean that up later. But uh, for now, my name's Eric Wielander and welcome to Windy Tech, a channel all about smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. Today, we're gonna talk about HomeBridge. And is HomeBridge really the best kind of glue to fit all your accessories under HomeKit? You go out and buy a lot of smart home accessories, like let's say Philips Hue lights, uh, you need to get what's called a bridge, which is a small box that you then connect to your network and then allows all of the accessories to then communicate with things like HomeKit. HomeBridge can serve as a hub for products and accessories that don't have one for HomeKit. So for example, the Nest family of products from Google they're probably never gonna support HomeKit. But by using HomeBridge and then installing an open source extension on that for Nest, then you're able to hook up all of your Nest system and see it in HomeKit. Because it runs on Node.js, HomeBridge can run on a variety of different hardware that you might already have connected to your network. Uh, for example, a Mac that you always have on, or maybe a Synology that you have connected. Now, if you're gonna go out and buy dedicated hardware to run HomeBridge on, uh, I would recommend, if first, if you're maybe thinking about getting a Synology, look at the Synologies, that, uh, which is a network attached storage, look at the ones that can support Docker, uh, because then you could probably just run it on that along with whatever else you wanted to use the Synology for. Uh, personally, I went out and got a Raspberry Pi. That's definitely gonna be your cheapest option, I think. Um, you can get just the motherboard of a Raspberry Pi for like 30-ish dollars, but there are a whole bunch of kits on Amazon and other, elsewhere uh, from vendors that'll give you everything you need to get the Raspberry Pi up and running. So the motherboard and also the case, the power supply and everything else. And that can be, you know, 50, 60 something dollars. Um, so again, not that expensive, especially compared to something like a Synology. I got the Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus, which seems to be one of the more current, newer models of Raspberry Pi. And by the way, this has been driving my wife crazy all week as I've been playing with this thing and talking about my Raspberry Pi. She has been so annoyed that it's not actually a Raspberry Pi that I'm making her. So warning to people who live with you who might be annoyed by the same thing. First, you need to take your parts out of the box once you get your Raspberry Pi and assemble it maybe. And then you wanted to get it to boot up and um, probably connect it to a display keyboard and mouse for that. And then uh, turn on SSH. So that you can SSH into your Raspberry Pi remotely, which will be used for a lot of the rest of the setup of that for HomeBridge. So then you don't really need a monitor, keyboard, or mouse, but you just need to get it powered on and connected to your network. So I have mine hardwired on my network in what I call like my server closet. It's really just a closet where I have a bunch of, um, you know, electronics and stuff and my internet coming in there. So from there, you'll wanna go to the HomeBridge GitHub page and follow their steps on how to install HomeBridge. You basically need to install Node on the Raspberry Pi and then I'll link the uh, steps in the tutorial in the description below and then set everything up. Now, one of the things that I tried during all of this setup is there's a couple of iOS apps that both allow you to monitor your Raspberry Pi and then also monitor and set it up with HomeBridge specifically. And I initially did that for setting up Node and some other things and it'll auto add like some accessories and, and um, gives you easy access to modify the config files and access the terminal from an iPad or iPhone. Seems like a really cool product and it seems really well thought out, well designed. I am skeptical that it might have been the source of some of the issues then when I tried to, after setting that up, go ahead and integrate Nest into my Homebird setup. So, um, you know, Try if you want, but I'm I'm not officially like recommending these apps saying that they're perfect and they made everything easy. Um, I think in some cases they might've made stuff for me a little more difficult. Follow the steps on the HomeBridge website via an SSH into your uh, Raspberry Pi. You can either use Terminal, which is free on the Mac, or you can get an app like Prompt um, on iOS to enable an SSH connection from there.
So if I go to my home here and I wanna add these home bridge accessories, I'm gonna say add accessory. And in this case, we do wanna do the home bridge uh, bridge that you'll see with this little triangle symbol here, hopefully, um, for your home bridge. And it'll say this is an uncertified accessory. And that's, you know, because it's not been officially registered with Apple. It's a um, something you set up yourself. But, you know, you've made this decision and I think you know what you're doing in this. So I wouldn't worry about that. But just, you know, you can't proceed if you if, if that's not OK. So um, add anyway, and then um, it'll then give me a chance to hit, type in the numbers here none of my nest accessories are coming up so why is that so i'm back here on my mac and i've ssh'd into my raspberry pi and i think i've figured out what's going on from here i'm going to simply type homebridge to restart homebridge okay and it's saying config.json not found after trying and failing with a variety of different ideas, I figured I would remove the accessories added by the iOS app for telling the temperature and power status of the Raspberry Pi. I also removed them from the Homebridge config.json file. I once again tried adding the Homebridge to HomeKit to see if this option would work. So I'm here and I'm going to add an accessory in my home now that I cleared everything up. Add anyway, it's an uncertified accessory, that's okay. Adding the home bridge, home bridge added. Yes! And then here is one of 17 accessories for all of my Nest stuff that I have. Yes, I have too many Nest accessories, but now I can integrate them with HomeKit, which is great. So here's HomeBridge, it's named by default. And then I'm gonna go ahead and assign it to the server closet, hit next. Then I have my basement camera, living room occupation sensor, and here's our living room thermostat, the master bedroom nest protect, master bedroom smoke as well. Oh yeah, I forget, I have a basement and an office carbon monoxide, same as that. Okay, and boom, we have all of our accessories. So one of the last things I did to make sure that my setup will work for the long term is I set up the Raspberry Pi to open and launch Homebridge at launch. And there's a, some instructions on how to do that on the Homebridge website. And that's really key because if you say have an SSH window open and you're um, connected to your Raspberry Pi, when you close that connection, then it's gonna potentially shut down the Homebridge service running on the Raspberry Pi. And this way, whenever your Raspberry Pi is to restart or anything happens to it like that, it will just automatically start up Homebridge again, so then your accessories will still remain available. If for some reason something happens with the, the connection and Homebridge and the setup, all you'll see from there is just that the accessories won't be available in HomeKit, uh, just like any other scenario where an accessory would be unavailable. The other thing to note with the Nest integration is that the cameras by default come over as motion sensors, so you don't get the live video and your Nest cameras don't just appear as native HomeKit cameras. There's an additional Homebridge package that you can install to have your cameras appear in HomeKit, um, but I haven't gotten that far yet in setting that up. But so far for me, uh, it's really nice to have my Nest thermostat integrated into HomeKit and be able to use that within scenes. For example, for these videos, I turn off the HVAC so that it doesn't um, damage the audio of these videos. So to be able to um, have that as part of the scenes to start and stop filming, then it also turns on and off the uh, HVAC system. That is so nice. So in the end, I think Homebridge is a really cool thing that you can fiddle with. I think the key part of HomeKit and Homebridge is that it's an uncertified accessory. It's something that's made from open source and then it's connecting with other products you might use. So you're putting a lot of pieces together in a way that's probably not gonna work out perfectly every time. So realize that you might have to fiddle with it now and then. It might not be as reliable as some of your other smart home tech, but 
For me so far, it seems to be working well. I'm really excited about using it. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on what I add to Homebridge over time or use more with it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you use Homebridge for something or if you're thinking about using Homebridge for something. Subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.